Hello and welcome. Together we're going to take a comparative look at these two 600 watt Platinum Flex ATX 1U power supplies. Here we have the Enhance ENP-7660B and here the Silverstone FX600. Externally they look similar and are the same size as they should be given that the Flex ATX power supply form factor is largely defined as having a length of 150mm, width of 81.5mm and height of 40.5mm. There can be on occasion some variance in length such as the now defunct Seasonic SS-350M1U which came in at 190mm length. Paint finish wise the, Seasonic, the Silverstone has a textured finish feeling rough to the touch whilst the Enhance is smooth. Connectors and loom. Whilst the connectors and wire grade are identical, here is where we see some differences. Both have four SATA connectors, but whereas the Enhance has just three, two Molex connectors, the Silverstone has three, along with the all-important floppy disk drive connector. Somewhere here. There we go. As you'd expect, both have the same 20 plus 4 pin ATX connector, but whereas the Enhance has a single 4 plus 4 pin CPU connector, the Silverstone has, where are we, get the right one, an 8 pin CPU and a 4 plus 4 pin CPU. But it's worth noting that on this Silverstone, these share the same single cable back to the power supply. For GPU, both have two 6 plus 2 pin PCIe connectors. Here you can see I had it a moment ago on the Silverstone. Um, however, on the Enhance unit, it has two separate cable runs back to the power supply. We can do this, we can have a little closer look. Now having two separate cable runs back to the PSU uh, is good for high load applications as it offers better load balancing and thermals due to the load from both connectors not being forced down one connector run back to the power supply. Now let's take a look inside. Now to me, it's fairly obvious that this is the same power supply, both produced by Enhance Electronics. We can see at the back here, we've got the same 3.3 stroke 5 volt buck modules. Although it's hard to see in here, the same secondary uh, capacitors and the same Japanese primary capacitor, which is a Rubicon if I remember rightly. Yeah. Let's open these up. Just bend these back. See a little better. Now transformer wise they may look a little different from the top but this is merely a different colour tape. Whilst the larger 12 volt transformer on the Silverstone doesn't have any part number showing on the top on close inspection we can see it's identical. The smaller one here 
uh, we can see does and this matches the one on the enhanced unit. Now the one thing that is different between them currently is the stock fan. So let's just have a look at those. So the stock fan on this uh, Silverstone FX600 review sample is a Yate Loon and as you may know the stock fan currently on the Enhance EMP7660 is an adder. Now there is a difference between them. The Silverstone this one here with the 8 loon has a max speed of 7500 rpm and that pushes 9 CFM at a full duty cycle, i.e. running at 12 volts, whereas the Adafan runs faster uh, and has a higher 12.1 CFM. So this will run at 12,000 rpm at full duty cycle. Of course, the higher the rpm, the higher the noise. So it's no surprise that the Adafan will pump out 39 dB at 12 k rpm, whilst the Adafan pushes out 33 dB at 7500 rpm. One thing to point out though, that noise measurement is very subjective. Fans are normally tested in an anechoic chamber to a standard that defines which side they are measured from and from a distance of one meter. Anyway, we get a little bit of digression there, away from it. But what does this actually mean? Well, both fans are dual ball bearing. And of course, the Yate Loon and the Silverstone FX600 will be the quieter of the two. Since when taking the three volts, which is what it'll run from most of the time, up to about 480 watts, it will run slower and quieter, generating less noise, but also generating less airflow. So of course, there is a trade-off. And that's what we're going to explore a little more later on. Does the slower running fan with less airflow mean higher retained thermals under load? Let's say 4 to 500 watts. Is there a way to get the best of both worlds without trading heat retention for lower noise? The answer to that lies in the fan bearing technology. In short, yes, both of these are dual ball bearing. If we then apply a fluid dynamic bearing, which we know is quieter, you can kind of get the best of both worlds. But it is a little bit swings and roundabout. There aren't that many FDB fans rolling around with availability. Then there's the other issue, even fewer will run at the lower three volt startup speed. So options are limited. There is one option though, and that's to run with an Octur 40 mil fan, but not a 12 volt DC one. That simply wouldn't spin up. Now we're talking about a five volt one. Okay, that might seem a little counterintuitive, but stay with me for a moment. Both these power supplies, or should I say this power supply, as they are the same underneath, just wearing a different coat. Anyway, both are extremely well designed and the fan speed doesn't step up above 5 volts DC whilst loads are below 500 watts. In fact, it takes a heck of a lot to get them to step up with full load on them. So whilst we trade off 100 watts of max power, we can then use a 5 watt volt fan. At max speed, these push out just 5.5 CF fan. So just to show what we're talking about, knocked off fans. So <clears throat> either of these will push out just 5.5 CFM. But remember, for the most part, we're set at three volts DC. So for the Nocturne fan, that's 60% duty cycle compared to the stock fans that run 25% duty cycle. So the Nocturne fan at 60% duty cycle pushes out approximately 3.3 CFM. The other fan at 25% duty cycle pushes out just over 3 CFM and the 8 loon just 2.25 CFM. Now the other stock fan is clearly going to be the loudest and if you were going to be looking for full power in say a server environment where the noise is not key but lower thermals for component longevity are then currently the ENP with the stock adder fan would be my choice. For full power applications where low noise over product life is more important than Silverstone FX600. However if you're going to be pulling 500 watt continuous or less then a fan swap to a Nocturne can give you the best of both worlds that is lowest internal thermals and lowest noise. You can do this yourself by sourcing one and splice soldering in the red and black connector off the original connector, that's here. Or if you want, 
the power supply, but would also like a warranty intact, we can supply a fan pre-fitted with a five-year warranty. Equally, we can appreciate that many applications will not need these gazillion connectors and cable run lengths will be simply too long. Again, we can provide custom loom length to your specifications with warranty included. Now let's move on to the thermal, thermal side of things, get out the variable load and have a look how we get on there. Now what we're gonna do is put some load on these power supplies. Uh, we've got the uh, Silverstone unit here, uh, we've got the stock enhanced unit here, and an enhanced unit with the Nocta fan. Um, we are going to basically put 400 watt load on the 12 volt rail, 25 watts on a 5, and 25 watts on a 3.3 volt rail. Uh, there'll be 200 watts put on a PCI connector and 200 watts on a CPU connector, and the rest will be coming through the ATX connector by way of a, uh, a little breakout unit over here. Um, so we've got this box here, which is just feeding back round to one of the loads, um, which you can see, where are we, here we are, look. We've got two loads here, they're both 400 watts each. The one on the right here will be the uh, 5 and 3.3 volt one, and the one on the left here will be the 12 volt one. We're going to run, run the one on the left at full load, that's 400 watts, uh, 200 load per channel. Um, be a little bit of monitoring of the voltage on the 12 volt rail where we can. Um, and then we're going to run it for 20 minutes and just see where we get to temperature wise. Um, just with the external temperature thermometer, a little infrared one there, and I'm um, just going to compare how they compare. Now, I would expect the uh, Silverstone to run the hottest, as it's got a slower fan than the enhanced one. Um, so I'd expect this to run cooler. The uh, one with the Nutco fan, I would expect to be around the same as the stock enhanced one. Roughly so, a little bit cooler than the Silverstone, but quieter because it's a fluid dynamic bearing. Um, but we'll just try that and see how we get on. So now we're going to move on to some load testing and having a little look at the thermals. So we'll start with the uh, the FX600 here, the Silverstone. Uh, we've got uh, two 400 watt loads here. We're going to run this one at full 400 watt. This is going to put uh, where we 200 watts on the PCIe connector, another 200 watts on the CPU connector. We're then going to pull in 25 watts on the uh, 5 volt rail and another 25 watts on the 3.3 volt rail. So let's just get all this plugged in. We've got our little infrared temperature measure here. We see we're a rough ambient of about 23 degrees today. We can just about see that. Okay, so let's get us plugged in. We've got the load switched on already. Let's get this connector into our breaker box. Okay, I'm just going to plug in the other ones. So, this one is a PCIe connector. Let's just try and get that together. to go together. Oh actually one of the pins is a little bit damaged on that connector. I'll run it on this one. Uh, it must have been like that, we can always replace that. Let's try this one. Oh. Or is it my pin that's damaged? It might be my pin. My receptacle. Yeah, I'd say it's my pin on my receptacle. What we'll do is change that now. Okay. Put that back in. Let's have another go, shall we? Let's 
see if we can this time get it to slot in. Okay, there we go. Straight in this time. And we also want this one. Okay. Oops. Oh, one, it's all falling apart already. Trying to get my clock in here to get an idea of the time. Okay, so let's uh, switch this on here. What are we missing? And power. Okay, I'm just going to swap this round. We want to see 12 volts DC, just to have an idea. There we go. You can see that, I don't know. Hopefully you can just about see that. I'm just clear out space. And it's about 25 pass. Everything is preloaded, so if I just give you an idea, so you've got 16.6 .6 amps on there, 16.6 .6 on there, 5 amps on there, 7.6 on there. We're just gonna go ahead and switch on the rails. Let's start with the low ones. Or the high one. Set. Okay, so we're now fully loaded. We're going to leave this about 20 minutes, so it's uh, you can probably just about the o'clock. It's probably yeah, about this time. Ooh, too close. I can't get it in. Anyway, it's 25 past. We'll give that 20 minutes just to warm up. So a few minutes in and we're, uh, we're up to about 33. Okay, so we are, where are we? Just over five minutes in, let's have a look, see how we're doing. We're up to about, just over 45 degrees. Have another quick look.
So we're up to about 58 now. Uh, you might be wondering why it is so hot there. And the reason is that is really the, uh, the output of the 12 volt uh, transformer internally. So there's a lot of current, a lot of load going through that single point. So it's always going to be the hottest point on the power supply. Um, we're about the 15 minute mark roughly now. I'm just going to have another little look. Okay. I'm getting up to about 62 degrees C on the hot spot. Elsewhere, down in this corner, 30, 30. 39 it's a bit hotter up top here 49 close we are near the fan the fans pulling a bit more out there so we're just in the 40s down near our mains connector Not too much now what I'll also do is I'm just going to have a look at the internal temperature I'll turn it over. Okay. So most of this uh, here has plastic shrouding on it okay, to help the air get drawn across it. So we've got an air being pulled in here and here to help draw through, which is largely to try and cool this hot spot here. So we'll try and get a measurement in here somewhere. can't quite get to it with a case on. Just having a look, see if we can measure the, uh, the actual bottom of the component that really gets very warm. With the housing on, we can't really measure it so easily, so we'll stick with the uh, where its power is coming out, which is on the bottom here. So I'll leave her up and um, we'll just have another quick check. Yeah, we'll cool down a little bit, I hope it's still in there. Still sort of just peaking in the 62s. Okay, we're about the 20 minute mark, so we'll just get a sort of final measure on this and we're in the sort of 65 degree region up to 65 when we measure there and around sort of lower so what we'll do now we'll um, move on to the enhance and we'll run the same test again exactly the same load etc so let's hop over to this power supply Enhance, which has a slightly uh, higher speed fan in it, pushing maybe 3 CFM more of air at full load. Um, but we'll just try it on exactly the same load.
Okay, so we start again. Uh, we'll just check where we are to start with. This has been run for a few moments. A little bit of warmth, not a lot. So we'll get this all powered up again, and it's about 10 to. Switch our loads on. Okay, so we're coming up to the 10 minute mark now. Uh, it's getting a little bit warmer in here. Probably should have accounted for that, but let's just have a look. See how we are. So we're getting up to about 53 degrees at the 10 minute mark. Almost 54. Okay, so we're going up to the 15 minute mark again, and uh, we'll just have another look, see where we're at. Okay, we're nearly, uh, nearly at 60. To 8.6, we'll have a little look around, see where we are down here. 32 is up there, 44 front of the fan, 39, 40, maybe a little more air going through that way, there we go, it's nearly 60, we'll just have a look on this one, see if we can get inside as well, oh, I can actually see it a bit better where it is in this one. can't really uh, just can't get to the spot <clears throat> on the leg of the transformer um, with the case on it's something we could always look at in the future we just have a look at the, uh, the temperature there but it's it's only the hot spot and as I say it's um, it's heat padded on both of them uh, and heat padded underneath to the bottom here so we'll just pop that back up We'll let that run on to uh, 20 minutes.
Okay, so we're coming up to the 20 minute mark now. Um, I know this is not the perfect testing environment. And obviously between tests, we've got a lot of extra heat generated by these loads as well as the power supply. But it gives an idea. Um, and we would expect this power supply to run a bit cooler. So we're just about Yep, we're down again just about 61. Where are we? Yeah, you know, 61.9 the highest. So about 62 versus uh, 65. Uh, and um, what we'll do now, we'll move on to one last test. Um, we expected this one to run a bit cooler because we've got more airflow from this fan. Uh, than from the stock one at Silverstone. Um, what we'll do now, we'll have a look at this one, which is the enhanced, but with a Noctua fan fitted. Um, it's a slightly different loom on this, just because we've already taken away the SATA and the, um, oh, what we, SATA and Molex connectors. So on this one, we've just got the uh, 24 pin uh, two PCIe connectors and the uh, the eight pin here, um, which later on will be shortened, uh, which is shortened and more suitable for the small uh, four litre cases. Okay. So we'll just get this one set up now. Let me get this one off the bench. I could do with cooling everything down a little bit. I can certainly feel it's uh, it's a lot warmer now than when we started. Okay, so let's, let's get this checked. Let's see where we are to start with. Uh, about 23 degrees. Okay, let's get it switched on. Okay, we're up to full load. Uh, just a minute past quarter past there. So we're uh, coming up to the 10 minute mark now, we'll just have a another quick measure, try to find the, the hot spot. We're about 53 and a half.
Okay, we're coming into the 15 minute mark again, so we'll have another little look, see where we're at. Okay, we're going to go over here. 58. And as we're at the 15 minute mark, we'll have a little tip down as we've done with the others. Let's go through the motion so we keep it as similar as possible as we can. But this has surprised me a little bit to this point. <clears throat> I expected this to be about the same as the adder, but it's really based on a very rough linear calculation and perhaps it's performing a little better than expected. So here we go, we're coming up to the 20 minute mark now on the uh, Enhanced ENP760B with Noctua fan. Let's see where we are. Okay, well that's a good result. Now considering it is warmer, we've run the uh, all the power supplies previous to this straight after each other as quick as we can. And we are just about, there we go just tipping over 60 degrees. So we've got a five degree difference from the Silverstone FX600 uh, versus the, uh, the Enhanced 766, well, Enhanced EMP 7660B with the Nocturne fan. Um, so noise level wise, this is very, very quiet, as is this, um, but we have more airflow going through here. So this power supply runs cooler than this one. Um, it's a little more than I thought. I thought it would be exactly the same as the Enhance or maybe slightly better, but we're, we're a little bit beyond that. And we have to factor in that the environment's a bit warmer now because both these loads here are chucking out hot air, particularly the 400 watt one that's at full whack. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that video, give you a bit more insight into uh, the power supplies and a, a comparison of what are essentially the same internally um, but some difference between connector looms and really key difference between the fans. So this is what you get ultimately. When you compare a like for like ball bearing fan, run a slower one, you get lower noise, but you're not going to get as much airflow. Run a fluid dynamic bearing like this one here. You can't run it as fast, but if you can get the airflow to be the same as a ball bearing, you're going to get lower noise. And ultimately what we've done, we've matched up this fan to be the same airflow if not a little bit more maybe quite a little bit more than we think than the original add a 12,000 rpm fan um, so if you want cool and silent this is probably the best one to go for if you can and we can customize the loom thank you for watching